Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Stannis here presenting to you Saxon Lesson 89, which is about estimating square roots. So we have already practiced finding square roots in previous lessons of perfect squares from 1 to 100. Oh, and by the way, please have your notes in front of you and a pencil. Um, so we should know these top ones uh, fairly, like, easily, like, pretty much right away. Like, the square root of 1, by the way, or for example, is 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. So you're looking again for what number times itself equals the number in the square root box. So 3 times itself would be 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, you get the idea. 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we know all of these square roots. These are perfect squares because their square root is a whole number. Any other number between 1 and 100 is not a perfect square. For example, the number um, 30. That's not a perfect square. 30's, the square root of 30 is not a whole number. But what we're going to do today is we are going to do two things. We're going to find the square roots of perfect squares that are greater than 100, and we're going to use a guess and check method to estimate the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares. For example, something like 30, we can estimate what its square root would be. It's not a whole number, but we can say what, you know, decimal or mixed number it's, or what two whole numbers it's between. Okay, so let's go and start with the first part, the first objective, which is finding the square roots of perfect squares greater than 100. So the square root of 400 is a whole number because 400 is a perfect square. So using your, your math sense, think about what number times itself, not times two, don't forget about that. It's times itself. What number when squared equals 400? So let's kind of start out by saying, well, I know that 2 times 2 is 4. But obviously 2 times 2 is not 400. But if we add a 0, does that work? 20 times 20. Let's just make sure. Hang out the 0 here. And look at that. It is. So the square root of 400 is 20. So t that would be 400 is a perfect square. Oh, and we, re we write the answers to square roots um, off to the side usually. We don't put them up top like it's a division problem, just FYI. Okay, so example two, the square root of 625. This is also a perfect square. So now using what I learned from example one, that the square root of 400 was 20, I'm going to be guessing something greater than 20 because 625 is greater than 400. So now if I guess 30... I just know in my mind that's too high because 3 times 3 is 9, so that's going to be 900. So it's not 30, but it's higher than 20, so I'm going to guess right in the middle, 25. And it seems like it's going to make sense because it's 625, but let's just make sure. So we'll do, this is our kind of guessing and checking, and dropping a 0. And you can see that this equals 500, and we add that up. Ta-da! So the square root of 625 is 25, because when you square it, 25 times 25, you get 625. Okay, so I used a little bit of kind of reasoning there to kind of figure out what I was going to start with for my guess. And that's how you would do them. So let's try a couple more of those. And again, feel free to pause the video and then check back in when you're done. So 196 is a perfect square, but I'm definitely going under 20 for this because I know 20 times 20 is 400. It's over 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. I could try 15, but I know that 15 times 15, the answer is the product is going to end um, in a 5 or a 0, most likely. So, hmm, I think I'm going to try 14. Let's go with that. Because I know that 4 times 4 is 16, which might get me that last digit. Let's just see. Okay, so we get 56. Then we get 4. And, wow, first guess. Honestly, I didn't remember that was the answer. I just kind of used my math reasoning and figured it out on the first try, though. That's why kind of using your, your number sense before you just guess um, is a great tool. So the square root of 196 is 14. And now let's try 441. Well, I know it's over 20 because 20 times 20 is 400. So I'm going to try 21. Just seems like it would make sense because 
1 times 1 is 1, looking at that third digit there, that kind of helps to give it away. So let's see if it's 21. Okay, 2, and this would be 4, and yes, it is. Okay, so that's how you can kind of use your math reasoning and what you know about multiplication to help you um, know where to start guessing when you guess and check for these. Okay, so let's move on to the next part, which is estimating square roots of non-perfect squares. So 20 is not a perfect square. It kind of seems like a nice round number that would be a perfect square, but it isn't. Um, the square root of 20 is not a whole number. And now the question here is not asking us what the square, square root of 20 is. It's saying between which two consecutive whole numbers is the square root of 20. Consecutive, in case you don't remember that word, it just means in order. So consecutive numbers would be something like um, 5 and 6, not something like 5 and 8, because 5 and 8 don't go in order. You skip a few numbers there. 5 and 6 are consecutive because 6 comes right after 5. So hopefully you get what that means now. So the square root of 20, we want to figure out what two whole numbers it's between. So I know it's not going to be between something like 1 and 2, um, but we can kind of use what we know about our perfect squares to figure this out. So just thinking about going down the number line, 1, or going up the number line, really, 4, 5, 6, okay, 7, I'm just going to stop there. And if we square each of these, 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Well, let's take a look. I want the square root of 20. So, you know, I'm going to cross these off because I know they're too high. The square root of 20 would fall in here because 20 is between 16 and 25. So if the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5, well, the square root of 20 has to be somewhere between 4 and 5. So that's how we would figure it out. So we would say, for our answer, between 4 and 5. Now, they're not asking for anything more specific than that. But you kind of can get more specific if you guess and check. Like if you would guess, let's say, um, actually, that's what they do here. Like if we would guess 4.5 right in the middle and we try that. 4.5 times 4.5 is 20.25. Well, that's very close to 20, but it's a little over. So you can go down one tenth and try 4.4. And 4.4 times 4.4, using a calculator or using just pencil and paper will give you the product is 19 and 36 hundredths. Well, that's a little bit too small. So the square root of 20 is greater than 4.4, but less than 4.5. Um, it's actually a little closer to 4.5. So if you continue that process, um, you know, it's somewhere in the middle. So I know that between 4.4 and 4.5, if we think of this as 40 and 50, maybe it's something like 4.45. That would be my best guess to the nearest hundredth. Okay, but in actuality, if we continued this process, you would never find a decimal number or fraction that exactly equals the square root of 20. That's because the square root of 20 belongs to a number family called irrational numbers. We've heard this term before, but the, but the square root of 20 is an irrational number. Irrational numbers cannot be expressed exactly as a ratio, or that is, as a fraction or a decimal. Because a ratio is really like a division problem, and you can get divisions through, or sorry, you can get decimals through division. You can only use fractions or decimals to express the approximate value of an irrational number. So the square root of 20, we can say, is about equal to 4.5, um, which means approximately equal when we use that squiggly equal sign. But we'll never get an actual decimal number that truly equals the square root of 20. We can only round it off. So can you think of another number that is irrational and we use that squiggly equal sign? Hint, we use it a lot with circles. Hopefully that gave it away. Another irrational number that we use a lot is pi. We use that for area and perimeter of a circle. And pi is approximately equal to 3.14 as we know. But there is no decimal number that you can write that truly equals pi. Because remember, it's a, it's, it's a non-repeating decimal that goes on forever. So it's a non-terminating decimal as well. It keeps going. 
All right, so now you're at the practice set, ladies and gentlemen, and you are going to, for the top part, A, B, and C, find the square root. These are perfect squares, A, B, and C here. Now for D, E, F, G, H, and I, you are not going to find the square root. You're going to say between which two consecutive whole numbers these square roots would be. So let's actually, I'll give you one right here. I'll give you the answer to D. For the square root of two, well, I know that one squared is one, and 2 squared is 4. So, sorry, I, yeah, no, that's right. So, <laughs> I confused myself. So, the square root of 2 has to be between 1 and 2, because the square root of 1, well, is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So, it has to be somewhere between that, because, well, 2 falls in between 1 and 4. So, I would say 1 and 2. That would be my answer. So for all of these other ones, you're going to have like two num two consecutive numbers as your answer. One and two, or three and four, or five and six, or four and five, or eight and nine. Hopefully you get the idea. And we will check these in class. Okay, so thank you very much, and see you next time.